if you're a quarterback, Josh, where do you want to throw this ball? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe anywhere over here? Like, <laughs> it's wide open. Dak recognizes it. He's like, no way you guys just gave me this throw. We always say aggressively take what they give us. Like if they give us these shots, they give us something vertical, we got these skill players that we feel really, really good about, just take them, just go for it. You know, and, and if not, take the completion, take the check down. Austin's gonna catch a check down and get you another first down. And then we'll call another one. And so I think the mentality of that has been the way we've been kind of training at this certain entire off season. And certainly we, I think we got the guys to be able to execute those things. Welcome to Scheme. I'm Josh Norris. That is Colt McCoy. And you just heard from Kellen Moore previewing what the Chargers' new offense might look like. Colt, the six words that stood out to me, aggressively take what they give us. What does that mean to you? Aggressively take what they give us. I tell you what, I've heard that a bunch uh, from coaches throughout <laughs> my career, but I will say that Justin Herbert does an outstanding job of that. If it's not there, just check it down, right? Justin does that over and over and over. It shows up. The more tape you watch, the more comp easy completions he gets to Austin Eckler or the tight end in the flat. Um, aggressively take what they give you is great for an offensive coordinator because it's like I'd love to call down the field shots. I'd love to call heavy play pass, but I can't afford a sack and play second 15. I can't before an incompletion and go from second 10 to third and 10, right? You got you to give me something. And the, the, the more completions you get me, the more times I'm going to call these shots down the field. And I think that's exactly what Kellen Moore was trying to say. Chargers fans are super excited to have Kellen Moore as their offensive coordinator. And I'll say this, Colt, in preparation for this episode, watch, I don't know, anywhere from three to seven Chargers games from last year. And it got a bit frustrating at times. And I'm just going to list a few stats. Buckle your seatbelt. Um, Justin Herbert's average depth of target last year was fourth lowest when kept clean in the pocket. It was third lowest when under pressure, lowest when not blitzed, and then 22nd in the league when blitzed. So it felt like to me that no matter the situation, the team was simply not being aggressive in terms of attacking down the field. So again, going back to that first war word that Kellen Moore used, I think there was a reason he put that in there. Am I just playing armchair quarterback by listing all those stats? Because I'm sure it's a bit more complicated than just saying, hey, throw down the field a bit more often. Yeah, I don't think you're playing armchair quarterback. I think you're truly watching the tape and evaluating and saying what you see. I think there's a lot of factors that go into it, right? Number one, he lost his left tackle early in the season. Uh, he lost his starting center, who's phenomenal uh, at, for several games of the year. And I think that they're like him playing fast and getting check downs get, or getting to his check downs quickly. The, you, the O line played a factor in all that. Yeah, maybe some mm -hmm. of the play calls, you know, we'd like to be a little more creative or push the ball down the field. Well, we can't when there's the pockets collapsing all the time. I think just when you look at the entirety of the season, you got to factor in some of the issues that they dealt with from an injury standpoint, and then, totally. you know, bring a Kellen into the mix. Like they're going to be a, a, a firepower of an offense. I don't want to make it sound like this offense wasn't successful last year. It was top half the league, but it right. almost felt like the offense was not built to maximize on Justin Herbert's talents and maybe talents that he has that no other quarterback, no offense, Colt, have across the league. Um, right. So let's be a forward-thinking show here. Let's peel open Kellen Moore's playbook and highlight some of the explosive and just flat-out cool plays he drew up last season. All right, here we go. We got second and 15. Here's Kellen Moore. He decides to go empty against the Bucks, And one of the things he does, which I really like, is he puts Tony Pollard out here. And what this does, it allows you to see, is it man or zone? It gives you a good tell. Right now, we got the corner for the Bucks out over the top, so automatically Dak knows, okay, I got zone coverage. I have split safety. I have two safeties here. So we're running all go. We're running versions of all go with Tony Pollard as a check down. What he's going to do is he's going to hold this guy with his eyes, and he's playing the high-low on this side. He's going to high-low Devin White. If C.D. Lamb can bend it in here, and Devin White takes Tony Pollard. He'll hit him for a, you know a, an explosive play that we call. Now, if Devin White decides to carry C.D. Lamb and try to double him with the safety, now who's going to guard Tony Pollard right here? So it's a right. it's a very safe call. It's second and fifteen, and Kellen's thinking, hey Dak, just get me into third and manageable. If you have to throw a check down, throw the check down. If we get an explosive play, great. If they happen to play single high, now we're taking shots on seams. 
So I love the play call. I love the design. I love the information that it gives Dak before he gets the ball in his hands. So now Dak, when you watch this play, he's going to hold his eyes on this backside safety right here. And then he's going to play the high-low. Devin White carries but keeps his eyes in the backfield. And that allows Dak to trust C.D. Lamb to cross this safety's face to stay flat. And he delivers a strike for a first down in a second and long situation. And, that, and that's just the creativity of Kellen Moore and the expertise of Dak being able to say, okay, I know this play has a lot of options. I recognize what the coverage is. Based on formation, I hold my eyes the right way and I throw a strike to CeeDee Lamb for an explosive play. Yeah, and Colt, that's why I wanted to talk about this play in the context of this conversation because you go back to that first word, aggressive. And it's not, you know, a simple check down out of the backfield to Austin Eckler to maybe get you into third and eight, right? It's, hey, we're going to split... Tony Pollard out wide, which, by the way, he did on 15% of his snaps last year under Kellen Moore. Austin Eckler was only at 8.8 in the Chargers last season. But then it's also a downfield pattern that he's the check down. But then it, it gives you, once again, that aggressive downfield element to not bank on third and seven conversions. And you pick up 20 yards on a second and 15 and then set you up for a touchdown drive here, too. We talk about aggressively take what they give you. Like you're only throwing this bender in here versus a shell coverage when you know he's going to cross face and when you know that the linebacker's eyes are in the backfield, right? That happens, let's call it two out of ten times. The rest of the time you're throwing a check down and you're still being aggressive because you're giving right. one of your best players, Tony Pollard, the ball in space in zone coverage and he's going to get you in the third and manageable. So it's just a very right. well-executed play. I see Justin Herbert being able to do this uh, – very well. If you go big people and you put eight people in the box, so what does eight people in the box get you? It gets you single high. Now, let's work anything we want on the outsides. We got one-on-one -on -one coverage here. We got one-on-one -on -one coverage here. We're going to have great protection. We have one of our offensive linemen in the backfield. We have a great blocking tight end. And Zeke is a great protector in play-action pass. Like, We'll get what we want here. So here they go big, big people, put an O-lineman in the backfield. Tampa Bay says, you know what? We're going big. We're putting eight in the box. You get single high. They go heavy play action pass. Dak says, okay, I know what I got. I'm going to take rhythm, rhythm drop, and now I have an explosive play. Running comeback, he's wide open. I don't even throw a great ball here. He's under no pressure. He knows a single high, throws a comeback versus off coverage, another first down. This is second and 10. So again, Colt, to me, what stands out with the aggression part is, hey, we can get down to a third and three, we can get down to a third and manageable a, a, a conversion territory. But no, this is, we're going to take what they give us, get down the field, create an explosive play of not just picking up 10 yards, but picking up 34 yards. Look, you see Dak, okay, we're going to line up He's got Zeke in the pistol. We're in a one by three formation with the tight end here. So what you get when you move when you put the tight end here is you. It also allows you to see coverage, right? So now you have a uh, one of the safeties right here, man to man coverage, right? Okay. This is a big alert. We got C.D. Lamb right here in the slot. Zach Dak knows his man coverage. He says, "Hey, alert, alert, check, check." He bumps Zeke up to here. And now they run this awesome play design. We're going to play past Zeke. We're going to get out of the move or, or get on the move. We're going to secure the edge on this pocket. And we're going to throw CD on a double move and saying and trusting like he's our best player. He's going to cross the safety's face. And I've got all this space over here because this guy is tied down on the tight end to put the ball. Yeah. CD can run this route flat. He can set it high. His job is to beat the safety. Now let's secure the edge. So now they've got this guy going to do a little chip block. He's going to chip here, kind of get out of the way, late check down on the move. And we get the edge secured. And look at the flow, like all of the linebacker flow in that direction. What you don't normally see here is your center snapping the ball and then coming out here to be 
Dak's personal protector. So the linebacker's going to block down. It's just an added layer of we're selling zone, we're selling zone, we're selling zone. We've run this a bunch. Now let's build a play pass off of it. CD's job is to just beat the safety, right? Now he's got him turned around. He can go anywhere he wants. And Dak is just sees all this grass to just lay a nice ball up, let his best receiver go get it. He gets out in the pocket, throws a strike. Big-time play in the fourth quarter, game-changing play, all set up on a creative play call that allows you to see coverage pre-snap and get to the best play you got in the playbook. You motion your slot receiver across, and now what you recognize here is nobody travels, right? Nobody travels with him. Now you know it's some version of zone, and your antenna has got to be up that if the nickel doesn't travel to set the formation, he could blitz right mm. antennas go up so let's let's watch this and now you're just running a little high low concept here a, a crosser and a shallow crosser and you're really high low on the hook player you're trusting that this receiver is going to carry the corner out now you got this whole side of the field to work on third and ten if the protection holds up now Dak does a tremendous job stepping up in the pocket and finding the lane the hook player attracts here there is nobody out here. And this play happens because Dak steps up, avoids all the pressure, and finds him. But what I want to talk about is great play design on third and ten. You know, they lose a guy by blitzing the nickel, and now there's a big void. He makes a guy miss. All of a sudden, on a third and ten, you get an explosive play for 30 or 35 yards, and now you're on the move. Now you're going to get points. Can we highlight the big boys up front for this end zone view too? Because this is one of those instances, Colt, where backup offensive linemen, injuries at center, don't really get this that often when going back and watching Chargers 2022. But as you said, the top, Cowboys 2022, and for years now, you've had much better pass protection that allows you to be more aggressive in these instances and allows you the lanes to climb the pocket. Yeah, exactly. These guys up front, you can see them communicating. They're doing a great job. He's talking here. He's saying, okay, the nickel didn't travel. I know we have two defenders on this side, but I bet somebody's coming here. Let's keep the protection front side. Now the back does a great job keeping his eyes weak, scanning the strong. They sort this all out, and you got a hat for a hat. Dak steps up, and, you know, it's an explosive play that a lot of people have to do things right. But what Kellen does is he gives Dak all kinds of recognition to see what's going on, right? Let's line up in a one-by-three with our tight end here, okay? Earlier we saw the, the clip where the safety was down. He knew it was man coverage. Okay, let's get to our best play here. I can't really tell. I think it's zone coverage, right? Let's motion the slot defender over. Nobody moves. It's for sure zone coverage now. And now he knows. I've got here, and I've got the shallow. There's this huge debate on football Twitter of motion versus no motion because, like, all of the EPA rates are higher when teams motion and blah, 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 and just, like, where you stand on it because then, like, Aaron Rodgers comes out and says, like, oh, I hate it. I don't want to motion at all. Um, and I was just going to ask where you stand. I think, you know, Aaron has a point, right? I want things to look the same, and – I'll find my answer versus the coverage once I get the ball in my hands, right? He's Got played it. for 20 years, so he knows what he likes. Right, I right, think, right. I think for a guy <laughs> like Kellen, it's like I'll formation or I'll motion just to give just to give you some help. Like I like, yeah, I like it because it helps me. It helps me understand. Like I love motioning from, you know, a stack formation to a static, you know, to a three by one set or motioning to a stack because then the DBs have to communicate. They have to talk and say like, how are we sorting this out? Right. And by film study or things you can, you can determine like, well, they normally play man or they're going to play in and out or they're going to play some version of zone or what, like you can sometimes manipulate the defense based on shifts and sure. motions, which are helpful. Talk us through this one. I'm not sure what the down distance is. We're going to motion CD, right? It looks like single high. We don't know. If you stay in a three-by-one, I would imagine that he's the three-week player 
based on the mic, pushed all the way across the ball, right? There's a void here. He becomes the flat player. All right, now we motion over. We're going to stay single high. And now, if I'm the quarterback, I just got to hold him, right? He didn't really move. I think it's single high. C.D. Lamb's on a fly motion, little play action to freeze the linebackers, and the post <laughs> safety stays on this hash. Like, if you're a quarterback, Josh, where do you want to throw this ball? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe anywhere over here? Like, it's wide open, right? <laughs> Dak recognizes it. He's like, no way you guys just gave me this throw. And so, on one of the most critical downs in football, third down, high red zone, not is it third and manageable. This is third and nine. This isn't an easy conversion by any stretch for any Certainly. team, for any coordinator. Defenses love to have you in this position because there's a lot of things they can do. They can pressure. They can play coverage. Like As long as they win this down, they're holding you to three points. So, again, just another creative play design here. Kellen has made it simple for him. It's all go to the weak side of the field. And on third and nine, Dak throws a dime for a touchdown and changes the entire game early in the game. Colt, I have no idea what the view like is back there. Um, but at what point as a quarterback, <laughs> do you know that you have this one in the bag based on the coverage and seeing that backside safety? I think right about now, right? His, his eyes are already there. He's recognized like, holy cow. Like I got one-on-one -on -one regardless. Like I'm probably going to throw it to CD lamb versus this safety regardless, right? It's one-on-one. -on -one. Let, let's let him make the play. But CD recognizes it and kind of shaves it off almost like a skinny post and Dak throws a strike for a touchdown. We went from cover three in the last one. And I asked that question because this is either cover one, cover three, single high look. Let's put it that way. Uh -huh. And the Chargers, def or the Chargers offense faced cover three at one of the highest rates in the NFL. And it felt like to me, Colt, so often we got these short patterns. We either got stick or quick game, something of the sort, rather than the aggressive stuff that we just saw with Kellen Moore. Um, and that was one of my frustrations when, when watching this. But you might be of the opinion that this isn't that bad of a play call. Yeah, I mean, listen, we all know the Chargers face a lot of injuries up front. I don't think this is a, a terrible play call here. A lot of teams run this play. It's basically you know, what you would call like an across-the-board read, a pure progression read. Um, in the in the quick game family so it's like hey as a quarterback you know get a completion when I call quick game right it doesn't really matter there is a progression but whatever you feel you might get heated up you might feel a soft spot in the zone and get to number three you know quickly whatever and I think essentially what Kellen does or, or what Justin Herbert does here is he gets a motion right and now Buda Baker does a great job of playing over the top to take that guy away. And Kel, uh, or and Justin in his drop back probably sees like a flash of color, right? Something where that takes away read number one. And so as he, as he progresses, you know, he gets off of that quickly and sees a lot of space over here and just dumps it off to his back. And quite honestly, it's not a terrible play. It results in a one yard gain. You know, he probably could have taken him or him if he wanted. But at the end of the day, it's quick game. He got a completion. And what could have been, you know, a seven or eight yard gain, you know, turns into a one yard gain. And it's not the end of the world. I love Justin Herbert, but it did stand out to me that he did go from one to two to three check down quickly. And I think what you just outlined where, hey, there were two guys open, but even when you were circling those, he was already going down to his back coming out of the flat. I did want to talk about one other Herbert play that we did get another example of stick Colt that turned out to be one of his most ridiculous plays of the season. We've got a fourth and 12, like literally fourth quarter. How many plays in the playbook for fourth and 12 Colt? Yeah, not, not many plays, right? Not many plays. What we're, what we've got here is the chargers are running a version of like sticks, like, you teach everybody to get plus two from the sticks. And Justin Herbert, let's find the best matchup based off coverage. And worst case scenario, which is what you get right here, is man coverage. But what you want to do versus man is you want your receivers to like run and retrace and maybe 
you know, you can fire a ball in there for a first down. But it's fourth and 12. Maybe the clock's running down. We saw this a lot from the Chargers last year. A lot of teams do this where you're just trying to get something past the sticks to get a completion and keep the chains moving. Obviously a critical situation here. And a little bit of a coverage breakdown here by the Raiders. You know, unless they're choosing to double team this guy, which looks like that that might be the case. I think Herbert's probably thinking pre-snap, like I've got some version of two-man, right? So they're going to run this, you know, we call it change. You're going to run it right at the chains. Um, don't The Raiders don't get much of a pass rush. And listen, this is where this guy right here is phenomenal. Like he's one of the best young guys in the game at creating plays when things aren't there. Um, we've showed you clips of him, you know, getting into his checkdowns quickly. It's something that young guys don't do a bunch. It's really an art, and he's really good at it. Um, but this right here is pretty amazing, right? He sees this guy's dead, no retrace. This guy's doubled. Don't love that throw. Don't love this throw. In fact, the DB's like underneath my coverage. My running back is matched. Like, I got to go make a play. It's fourth and 12. Like, there's somebody, I got to give somebody a chance to make a play, right? He extends the play. I mean, there's nobody in that area that he's running to. And now this turns into scramble drill. Every team works on this. As soon as the quarterback flushes out, you know, you're going to get somebody here. You're going to get somebody running here, somebody going deep, and this guy ideally coming across the field. And now let's just find our best matchup that we feel like can convert on this down and make a play. Finds his one-on-one, -on -one, throws a dime on the money, high outside shoulder. I mean, that's like an impossible throw from the – where's he standing? He's standing at the – I mean, that's – a 45 yard throw <laughs> on a rope, like throwing through a tire hanging off a tree. Yeah, let's watch it from the back end here. See what he's seeing. He's like, I'd ideally like him to break out here, but the DB does a nice job of his leverage. Now he moves to number two. He's doubled. He, he even checks backside. He's doubled. I got grass and I throw a rope. I mean, look at that throw. Like, that's absurd. That's silly. It might have been a 50-yard throw on the rope. An impossible touchdown on 4th and 12 that literally changes the game. But that's what you get with number 10. Colt, we'll close the chapter on stick with this. Is back the Cowboys' playoff game against the Bucks. We saw everything sit, 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 right the sticks. Instead, Kellen Moore has his own wrinkle to it, and what is it? Love this play right here, right? We're going to start out in a version of one by three again, right? Maybe get a tell for the quarterback, maybe not. Looks like it's going to be single high, but again, stick nod is really, you're working the stick nods versus single high. If you get some version of shell coverage, you're just going to throw the check down. Usually it's like a little shallow coming across the, uh, the, the middle of the field. And if you do get a one-on-one -on -one matchup, you're going to get CD Lamb here running a double move, stop and go on the corner. But as CD motions... It looks like it stays zone coverage. It does. Now, what we're going to get here is we're going to get a stick nod. And we're going to get a stick nod with your shallow route coming underneath as your check down. Okay? He's running the double move. We're probably not thinking C.D. Lamb here unless we get man coverage. Somebody motions with him, all that. Like, we're off of him. So now, for Dak, again... Kellen designs these. He sets these up one by three, motion into a two by two with your best player. Let's see the matchups. Okay. Dak's saying, okay, I gave the indicator. I gave my leg. I'm playing on the road. It's the wild card game. It's loud. But all I know is I have a single high safety. I'm going to work here on this stick nod to this stick nod. Whichever side this safety leans to, I'm going to play away from and throw a strike. If those get taken away, I'm going to take my drop and throw the shallow, right? Very safe play. Again, we talk about being aggressive, playing aggressive. This is playing aggressive. This is saying, okay, I've got stick nods on a single high safety. If they take them away, if they glove them, that's fine. 
I have a built-in shallow for you as your check down, right? Just take what they give you. So as we watch this play after the motion, stay single high, single high safeties here. Great pocket by the Cowboys offensive line. Dak holds his eyes on the safety. Obviously great execution by the Cowboys. Great execution by Dak. Phenomenal play, phenomenal rep, holding the safety with your eyes. But guys, this is coaching, guys. This is this is Kellen saying, okay, CD, your ball is if you motion across and you get man coverage, all bets are off. We're throwing you the ball 50-50. But hey, CD, when you motion across here, if you don't get man coverage, you got to run full speed. You got to sell it and you got to go because the one person that could take this ball away is this corner right here falling off if we get a lazy route. CD's a phenomenal player, but a rep like this makes him even a better player for his team across the league because you're seeing this. He technically opens up the stick nod. And again, just all around, all around well executed. Dak throws a strike. The corner's out of it, and it's a touchdown and a game-changing play. Longtime viewers of Scheme will know that's called the uh, love of the game route. Right, Colt? There you go. Love of the game route. No doubt. Love of the game. And I know you said that this is right outside of the red zone. But man, one more stat for you. You're going to get a lot of these this season, Colt. Dallas finished first in red zone touchdown rate this past season. The Chargers were 18th. Now, who knows how sticky that is. But man, from what we've seen, not just in second and 10 situations, third and 15, second and six scenarios at the 23 or the seven yard line, whatever it is, it seems like Kellen has an idea of an outcome that he wants to get to and then allows his quarterback to have a bunch of checks and answers based on what's happening throughout each with, again, the end goal, scoring touchdowns here in this area of the field. Yeah, and I think, honestly, it ties back into what we heard Kellen say about his offseason with Justin Herbert. He's like, I want you to aggressively take what they give you, and I'll put a lot on your plate if you can handle it, but aggressively taking what they give you is just recognizing coverage, simplifying the game, understanding your reads. Like, the more... Justin does that, which he's done for the last three years at an extremely high level, the more explosive, the more aggressive play calls he's going to get. And, you know, they could be potentially extremely good. Yeah. And then closing that with, and then we'll call another one. And Colt, uh, you and I will be doing a bunch of videos together. We'll make another one this season. Can't wait to do it with you. For all of you that have not subscribed to the channel yet, be sure to do so. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell so you know every single week when some new Colt McCoy content is coming at you. We'll see you all next time here on Skeet.